Hi everyone, I just want to give you a quick overview of Google Meet since we will be using Google Meet instead of Zoom this year. So in a different video, I'm going to show you how to set up your Meet. So for this video, I'm going to already have it set up and we're going to just look at the features that are inside the meeting. So first off, I've already joined and I'm going to have someone join with me. And when they do, they're going to be sent to the waiting room. So this is very similar to Zoom. You will either admit the person to the meeting, or if you are unsure who this person is, you can deny entry. I'm going to go ahead and let them in, but I also want to show you a feature down here in this little settings icon, and that's our host controls. So right now I have quick access enabled, but I can also turn that off. So let me tell you the difference. With it enabled, anyone who is asked to join my meeting who has a school Google account, be it employee or student, they will be able to automatically join my meeting. I don't have to admit them from the waiting room because I already know they are safe. They've already logged in with their school credentials. So I know that it is a real person who belongs in my meeting. Or if I don't like that idea and I want everyone to go to the waiting room, whether they're an employee or a student at all, I can turn that off and now everyone will go to the waiting room and I will admit them one by one. Really, it's based on your students and your preference. I personally would have this toggled off and then let each person into the waiting room individually. But if you've got, you know, 160 kids come into your meeting, that might not be realistic. And so you could turn that on. If you are doing a Google Meet that includes people outside of our organization, so parents or community members, whether you have this enabled or not, those people will automatically be sent to your waiting room. So if they don't have a Westfield Google account, they're going to automatically be sent to your waiting room for you to either admit or deny entry. All right, so since we're looking at the host controls, we've got a couple of other options. We can decide to let everyone share their screen, or if only the host wants to share the screen, we can toggle that off. And we can allow everyone to send chat messages down here in the chat, or if we want to limit it to just the host being able to put something in the chat, again, we can turn that off. We can click um, view all host settings, but basically it's the same three settings we have here. There's just more explanation to them. So if you're not sure which what they mean, you can look here. We do have some audio and video settings as well if you need to change any of that. All right, our next icon down here are, are the activities and we have two. So we can record the meeting and we can use a whiteboard. Now when we use the whiteboard, it's essentially creating a Jamboard, which is another Google product. You can have it um, where the students are collaboratively writing on that whiteboard or where it's just you and they're viewing it. Students can create their own whiteboard. However, when they create their own whiteboard, the only person who has access to that is the student and you, the teacher unless the student decides to share with someone else. But automatically you have access rights to their whiteboard and they cannot remove you from having that access to their whiteboard. Recording, only employees at Westfield Washington Schools will be able to record a meeting. However, please note that means if you have another teacher in your meeting or another employee in your meeting, even if they are not a host or a co-host, they will be able to uh, record the meeting. However, students and outside of our organization participants like parents will not have access to record the meeting. Next up, we have our chat. Again, we have the option to let everyone send messages by toggling that on or toggling it off. So maybe you only want to be, you want to be the only person to be able to send a message. That's fine, but maybe within your presentation, you want students to answer a question. You can simply toggle it on, let them answer the question, and then toggle it back off so that they aren't being distracted by the chat. This next option is going to show all the people in your meeting. 
you will always be the one on top and then all your participants will fall um, below that. So a couple of things, if you click this button, you can mute everyone in your meeting at once. Just heads up, they can unmute themselves, but this will at least get everyone muted in the click of a button. If you've already started your meeting, you can invite people to also join your meeting. You don't have to do this unless there's somebody that didn't get invited and during the meeting you realize either they weren't invited or all of a sudden you realize you need to add someone. Otherwise, you can invite your participants when you create the meeting. You don't have to wait till you've started the meeting to invite them. These are your host controls. Again, it's those same um, controls we've already looked at. We can find them in multiple places here. So share screen and chat, or we can go to all of them again and also have the quick access, which is basically the waiting room. All right, so in the call, of course, you, you can mute and unmute your microphone here. You can also mute and unmute here. You also can mute and unmute your camera here. You can pin yourself to the main screen if you would like to. That just means no matter where you go, you're going to find yourself on the screen. For your participants, you can mute people but you cannot unmute them they'll have to unmute themselves and then over here we can also pin a participant to the screen so that they don't go anywhere as you're moving around to different locations we can also remove a participant from the meeting here and then finally we just have our meeting details so we could copy this link and email it off to somebody, again, if we wanted to invite them to the meeting after we'd started. Otherwise, you can invite people when you're setting up the meeting. All right, let's look at the icons here then in the center of the screen. So this is mute and unmute your own microphone. Turn on and off your own camera. You can turn on and off the closed captioning I don't have my computer microphone on, so it's not catching my captions, but hosts and participants have all these same features here. You can also raise your hand. When you do that, you'll see over here, a hand has been raised. So let me do that for my participant. And notice as the host, I get a notice that Riley has raised her hand. I also have it over here as well. And if I do that, it'll also show me that Riley has raised her hand here. I can lower that hand for her or she can lower, lower it herself, but it just lets me know that somebody has a question or needs my attention. The next icon is present your screen. Now, if you have turned this off, in your host settings, I'll remind you where that is right here, share their screen. If you've turned that off, then only the host and co-host can share their screens. Okay, if you turn it on, then obviously students can share their screens. And we don't necessarily want that when we're meeting with a large group of students because we don't want them to take control of the meeting by sharing their screen and potentially with something inappropriate. If you were meeting one-on-one -on -one with a student though, you are welcome to let them share their screen because chances are you're wanting to see what they're looking at. Um, and that's a great way to troubleshoot issues. But in a group of students, we would not want students to be able to share their screen. Okay, when you share your screen, you're going to click it. What is it you want to share? Do you want to share your entire screen, which means if you have multiple tabs open, you can toggle between tabs. Do you want to just share this one particular window, which is basically what you see on your screen itself? Or do you want to do just a tab, which um, would just be one open website or one open location? So if you are doing a video of any kind or any type of animation of any kind, but definitely a video, you will want to select tab because the audio works better in a tab. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do my entire screen. Notice I have a dual screen setup 
in my office, if I only had the one screen, it would just show one. But because I have two monitors, it's showing me both ones. So I'm going to go ahead and select which one I want to use. Even if you only have one screen, you do need to click on it to select it. And notice, um, let me cancel that and do this one more time. Notice I can't share. It's grayed out. That means I have to click on the screen itself before my share button turns blue. So that's really important. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And now whatever I am looking at is what um, students will see. So here's my training guide and you can see that. I can come back to my meet and you'll just kind of see the blank screen. And when I'm done, I'll click stop presenting and I'll go back to my regular view. The next one is more options. This is our menu. And from here, we can create a whiteboard and record a meeting just like we could over here with our activities. Again, only Westfield employees can record a meeting. So our participants on their menu will not have this option. We can change the layout. So we have auto where it will flip back and forth between tiles and the like screen presentation or the main screen. You could put everyone in a tile here. You could have the spotlight where it's basically just the presentation or during a presentation, which is this main spot here, you can have everyone showing up on the side. So you can pick whichever one you like the best. You can also change uh, well, not in this one. Let's see here. In this one, you can also change the size of the tiles and how many you can display at one time. So again, if you have a lot of students, you might want to come up here to 30. So you can see 30 kids at a time or 49 kids at a time. Or maybe you just have a small class, a small group of nine. All right, I'm going to pick that one. And your students can also pick their background or their layout, I should say, so that they can do whatever works best for them. You can run your meeting in full screen if you would like to. You can change the background. These are kind of fun. Um, oh, okay. So I'm using my desktop and it's not going to let me change the background, but on my laptop computer, I am able to choose from a wide variety of very fun backgrounds. You can even blur your background. So even if you don't want to be like out in space, you can blur your background. So your students can do that as well if they kind of want to hide um, their background setting um, from home. Captions on and off. You can also do that right here. Use a phone for audio. If your computer's audio isn't working well, you can use a phone for audio instead. That's not really common, especially since our kids all have Chromebooks um, and we all have laptops. But if for any reason your sound wasn't working on your computer, you could definitely call in using your phone audio. Settings is just, um, well, we have our host controls again, but it's just um, if we need to change our audio and video. So basically, if we're using, like I am right now using a headset with a microphone. So I want to switch it from my computer's microphone to my headset microphone. This is where I could come. And then same thing with a video. Probably you're going to use your laptop's um, webcam. But if you had an external webcam that you wanted to use instead, you could come here and switch that. When you are done with the meeting, you simply click this leave call button. If you are the host, you can either leave the call if there is another co-host in there that's going to keep the meeting going. Or if you are it, you can end the call. And if you end the call, you end it for everyone in the call. So everyone gets kicked out. This is perfect for at the end of a meeting with students because we don't want the students lingering inside of a meeting unsupervised. Participants will just have leave the call option. They will not have an end the call option. So I'm going to go ahead and end the call. And it is done. For other videos on more specifics, especially on how to create your meeting, go ahead and in the training guide, you will find links to those other videos. Thanks so much.